All right. So this is a, something I learned from Dr. Paulette. And when it works, it is incredible. Um, so this will be our first hit. I'll hit here. Our second hit will be here. And hopefully our third hit will send it off. Okay. There's one. There's the second hit. And it did work beautifully. <laughs> How high did that go? That was pretty cool. So there is the hoof capsule and uh, the, the leg was boiled for 10 minutes on a freshly killed horse. And that's how you break it off of the end of the coffin bone. Okay, now we're gonna go back in the classroom and actually do the dissection where we take the foot apart in a systematic manner. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the very most important part of this video for horseshoers. So all the other stuff that we've talked about, all this other stuff we've learned, extremely important. I think you should just learn as much about it as you can. But this is our wheelhouse. This is what you have got to be the consummate professional. You need to know everything there is to know about this particular structure. Okay? So the hoof itself is the horny covering on the distal and the coffin bone. And it is what we work on. This is what we sculpt. This is what we set up so that it is better the next time we see it. This is what we try to improve every time, and this is what we try to understand how it grows. The hoof it actually has six regions. The periopal connects the hoof wall to the skin. Um, in Latin, it is called the limbus ungulae, and it is created by the periopelic ring. So that is the corium. Um, the word corium means a sensitive structure that produces and nourishes a horny structure, and the corium for the periopal would be the periopelic ring. We have the coronary band underneath that. The coronary band lies around the inside of what we call the coronary groove at the top of the hoof wall, and it creates the hoof wall itself. So the hoof wall is called perizungulae. It has three layers, stratum externum, stratum medium, where the tubules and the intertubular horn is, and stratum internum is our horny laminae that goes against the coffin bone. And the corium for the hoof wall is the coronary band. Continuation of the hoof wall is actually the bars. So this area here is actually a continuation of the hoof wall that comes all the way around. And that's important to know also because if people ask you for the origin of the bars, then it's going to be the coronary band. So our coronary band comes around here, juts forward. Where it juts forward, it creates the bars right here. On the bottom, we have the white line. You can see the white line here is a little bit uh, nicer than this one. This cadaver model here, it was uh, quite long and frayed. But the white line is called the zona alba. It is created by the terminal papillae of the distal and sensitive laminae. And interesting and very important for everybody to understand, the white line is only as thick as that distance is. It's only as thick as the sole is right there. So the terminal papillae are all around the distal end of this, of this coffin bone, and they create that white line. And the white line actually is a little bit yellowish in color. The sole... The sole is the area inside the white line and outside the frog. And so that's called the sole ungulae. The horny sole is produced by the sensitive sole. Um, now we've covered these two areas. We're going to have Cody go ahead and start doing some nipping on there because we're going to take this foot apart. And then we have our horny frog. Our horny frog is produced and nourished by the sensitive frog called the cuneus ungulae. And our bulbs, our bulbs are a very special tissue because they connect hoof wall to skin to frog and they are called the torus ungulae and created by the corium of the, of the bulbs. All right. Now, where would you say the wings of the coffin bone were to lay, if you would point to them right now? Okay, so very interesting thing. We talk about the palmar processes. Uh, if you look inside here, it kind of gives you a pretty good idea. But if you go directly up from the seat of corn, and the palmar processes will be there. A lot of people think they're going to be way up here. But imagine that on the inside. So if you imagine on the inside, you can see where your coffin bone would lie. So Cody cut a lot of wall off at a big angle, and he did that without a milk crate or a rubber dip below. <laughs> and now we're going to pull the hoof capsule off. All right, where's your scalpel? Okay, so as he's pulling, 
I'm going to actually cut through some of this white line tissue just a little bit, and that helps separate that area. So we're tearing the horny laminate off of the sensitive laminate. And this foot was quite short. Uh, remember I said earlier the foot is actually overbuilt? So if you haven't done this before, you don't realize just how overbuilt this foot is. It is incredible. So this foot being that short, that badly trimmed in order to get a, a dissection going, is still this hard to pull apart on a dead foot. It's incredible. It is just a remarkable structure. There we go. There we go. Nice. So all of these are horny laminae called the stratum internum. And they're created by the, the um, inside area of our coronary band. Now, whenever you look at a cross-section of the tubular horn and the intertubular horn, the tubules that are external or superficial, they are quite flat, and there's a, a, a lot of them. And as you get more deep or internal or axial, if you want to call it that, then they're, they're, they're larger and there's space for their part. So here's my thought on this particular subject. Cover all your nippers, code. Is the coronary groove is at an angle, and you can best see this whenever you just trim this off like this. So you can see that there's a little little triangle, a hoof wall up here. So if you consider it this way, if you were to drop a string from your hand every quarter of an inch, you'd have like 30 strings, and if you bent your fingers, you would still have 30 strings, but the ones on the outside would now be dense and packed together. And those, those strings represent the horn tubules themselves. They represent the horn tubules. And uh, the papillae laying on your coronary band, since your coronary band is in this particular uh, position, that would explain how the tubules on the outside edge or the outside, uh, the superficial aspect of it, are denser and flatter. Now, if there was a bas basement membrane, where would that sit? The basement membrane is what separates the... Um, I can see it there. Yeah, I can see it there. The basement membrane separates the coriums from their horny counterparts. And so there's a basement membrane between all of the coriums and their, uh, and their horny structures. Now, would you say it was a good way to explain that those horn tubules, as, those, as the hoof wall grows, it creates the hole that creates the horn tubules. So when it's done, it would be, be like having a bunch of bundle of straws with glue between them. And the holes where the straws were would be your tubular horn, and everything that connected those would be your intratubular horn. So all the choreas are covered with what we call papillae, or papilla. And so the papilla, if you can look closely, we'll zoom in on this. It looks like just really fine red whiskers. And those whiskers are going to correspond with the little holes in that horny sole. And all of the choriums are covered with papilla, and all of the papilla are separated from the horny structures by the basement membrane. So the basement membrane is going to be actually between all of those and these horny structures. So now you're looking at the sensitive frog, sensitive sole. That's the central sulcus of the frog. The central sulcus of the frog pushes up here. That in turn pushes on the collateral cartilages. That helps with a little bit of the expansion of the hoof wall. And you can see that kind of shape would allow some of that expansion as well. All right, our final mission in most of our dissections is to obtain the uh, navicular bone. All right. This is what we consider a trust exercise. <laughs> Give me four. So I'm cutting along the back here, over the top of the deep flexor, trying to cut through the collateral cartilage and around the side of that coffin joint. All right, there we go. I've just exposed the coffin joint. And I've cut through that collateral ligament of the coffin joint, which is a very a common ligament to get diagnosed as a lameness problem now that we have MRIs and some other structure or some other diagnostic abilities. Okay, so now if Cody's, don't take it all the way off, because he has that, he's wiping away some of the blood and the synovial fluid. And what you're looking at right there, this is the uh, 
pretty much the dorsal proximal edge of the uh, navicular bone. That is our proximal edge of the um, P3. And the deep flexor tendon, the deep flexor tendon would be uh, between the scalpel and the, there's the deep flexor tendon. Um, this is part of the suspension ligament of the navicular bone as well as the scutum. That's the edge of the uh, suspension ligament of the navicular bone. And right here, I'll be cutting through the distal navicular ligament or impar ligament. Nice. There we go. All right. So there's our navicular bone. Mission accomplished. Articular surface of navicular bone. And that is the cartilaginous uh, flexor surface of the navicular bone where the deep flexor passes over. Well, Code Man, I think that kind of concludes our dissection. I think so. We put out a lot of information. Guys, if you'll uh, come to heartlandhorseshoe.com, uh, if you have any questions, comments, you need any product, any, anything we can help you with, um, that's what we're here for. Thank you. God bless, and we appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day, guys.